Honor you, Lord, because you are worthy, Lord, our God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you're so faithful. Oh, you're so mighty, oh God. Oh, our hearts long for you, Lord.
God Almighty, all by yourself. We bless you, oh God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Oh God, your word says about who shall we run to? For you have the words of eternal life. Where shall we go from your presence? If we go to the depths of the sea, you're there. If we go to the heights of the mountains, you're there. So God, just surround us. The maker of heaven and earth. The almighty God. The one from everlasting to everlasting. We bless you. We bless you, God, with every breath that is in our mouth and every breath that is in our lungs. We just shout out to our God. We say he is mighty. He is worthy. He is magnificent. He is awesome. He is powerful. He is a prayer answering God. He is a miracle working God. He is from everlasting to everlasting. The, the scripture says he's El Shadia. He is the almighty one. He's Elohim, the strong and mighty one. He is Jehovah Sebohe, the Lord of hosts. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God our healer. He is Jehovah, Je Jehovah Seeker, no, the Lord our righteousness. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord our peace. He's a God our, 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 that favors us. He's a God that watches over us. We remind us tonight that he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. I'm here to say to you, you say a God that is 24, 7, 365 days a year, he's watching over you. He said he has given his angels charge concerning you. And so this evening as we enter in, we enter in into this presence. Come on, come on. Won't you just lift your voice? Won't you just bless me? Won't you just describe greatness of God? Won't you just tell him how much you love him? Tell him how much you appreciate him? Thank him in advance. Somebody is going to begin to thank him in advance. Thank him for that waiter. seen with our eyes which we have looked at and our hands have touched this we proclaim concerning the word of life the life appeared and we have seen it and we testify to it and we proclaim to you eternal life which is with the father and that has appeared unto us we proclaim to you what we have seen heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Christ Jesus. I write this to you to make your joy complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray to you today that you would have a complete joy. Amen. That, that means he, he, he says to us, he says, the, the, the writer to, of, of the scriptures just writes to us and he says, he says, that which we have heard, that which we have seen, that which we have handled concerning the word of life. This is what we testify to. What are you testifying to? Amen. Can you testify? I have tasted of him and seen that he is good. Oh, taste and see that he is good. Amen. That means we know in advance. Amen. We tasted and we've seen that he is good. We can testify to it. Amen. Yeah. 
we, 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 I was just asking a, a few of the aunties today, I said, what do you cook today, you know? And, and, and there was a few surprises, uh, you know. But, but you know, one of the things is that you, you know what is good cooking when you taste of it, yeah. Yeah. right? You say, hey, this is good, mm. right? If you like vegetables, you say, this is good. If you like meat, you say, this is good, right? But the reality is, yeah, the Bible says that which you have seen yeah. with your eyes, you, you have heard that which your hands have touched, testify to it. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will become a witness yeah. to the goodness of the Lord, to the grace of the Lord that is in your life. You, then he comes in and he, in verses 5 and he says, God is light and in him there is no darkness. Yes. If we claim to bear fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we lie mm. and we do not live out the truth. Yeah. But if we walk in the light as he, he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. I pray today that you would have fellowship in the light. Amen. That you would walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen. And this is, then he says you will have fellowship one with another. We've been speaking about being the salt, being the light, yeah. being the east. Amen. And part of it is walking in the light. Yeah. Amen. May we walk in the light of God. Amen. There's an old song that says, walking in the light of God. Amen. Yes. Walk, walk. You know, we're walking in the light of God. Father, we bless you. Thank you. Thank we glorify you. Thank you. Even as we worship God together. Thank you, Lord. I pray may the atmosphere in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. The atmosphere in the room, in the homes, for those that are watching us online, may become so heavy. Become so heavy with the presence of God. May it become so weighty. I pray that the very kabod of God, the very Shekinah of God, will just descend in this place. Like at the dedication of the temple in the day of Solomon. Father, I pray today, may the weight of your presence May the light of your presence, oh God, just shine upon your sons and daughters. Shine upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, may revelation come. May illumination come. Oh God, may their eyes be open. May their spiritual ears be open. May their spiritual eyes be open to see that which God has in store. So we take off all limits of you. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. We thank, we declare an open heaven over this house, over the lives of your people. We declare, oh God, and we say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, won't somebody just say, welcome, Holy Spirit. 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 We acknowledge your presence in this place. And so take your place, oh God. Take your glory. Let no flesh glory in your presence. It's all about you. It's all about you. Let's show up this evening, Lord. You are the lion and the lamb. You are the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Our oh God is powerful. Hallelujah. And this evening we're going to declare. Amen. Because He's given us the authority, the boldness to overcome all things right now.
seven you. The lost must save them. But you gotta believe right now that he can do it. That Jesus can do it right now. Oh, he paid the price for us. Oh, Father. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. You've done it all on the cross of God.
Father, we bless you. We bless you. Father, we thank you for those that are trusting you right now. In the middle of a challenge, in the middle of a, a storm, in the middle of a God that challenges all around them, they will see a victory. I declare today that the storm is over. I declare today, O oh God, that you are lifting them up. You are changing the circumstances around. Father, you are stilling that storm. You are, you are stilling, O oh God, that, that turmoil that they're feeling, O oh God, that sense of hopelessness, O oh God. We, we pray, O oh God, that you are calming that situation. O oh God, you are bringing peace in that home. You are bringing peace in that family. Father, we pray today, O oh God, that that which is stealing their joy, that which is stealing their peace, we speak that peace will be restored. Joy will be restored. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. So, Father, we declare right now that you are ministering, O oh God. Just minister grace into that life. Minister grace into that home. Minister grace into that family. We bless you, O oh God. We worship you, King of Majesty, Lord Almighty. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. You are Jaira, you are more than enough. You know. yeah.
Our spirits are ready to receive. And so like Samuel, we come before you and we say, Lord, speak to us. We are servants here. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks for worshiping. Amen. Amen. He's truly Jaira. He's more than enough. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 28. I just want to just maybe do some, uh, share with you just a few seed thoughts. This, this, uh, this evening. And, um, speak to you a little bit on, on, on what it takes and how God prepares those that would serve. Amen? Amen. And um, so if we have our Bibles, we, we're looking at Exodus chapter 28 verses 1 and uh, there is a buzz on the monitors. Right? It says, uh, Verses 1 and it says, Have Aaron and your brother brought to you from amongst the Israelites, along with the sons of Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithma, so that they may serve me as priests. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron and to give him dignity and honor. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in such matters that they are to make the garments for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as priest these are the garments that they are to make a breast piece an effort a robe a woven tunic a turban and a sash they are to make these sacred garments for your brother Aaron and his sons so that they may serve me as priests. Have them use gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. Amen? Amen. So there is a specific instruction that the Lord gives to Moses to give to those to Aaron, to his sons, and also to those that will make the garments. He comes in and he says to them. Firstly, separate these people to serve me as priests. Amen. Now, this is a very important thing. I've been touching about shepherds after my own heart, how God begins to, to use. And here he, God says, separate these. So God specifies and identifies those that he wants to use to serve in his house as priests. And then he says, make sacred garments for them. Amen. For your brother Aaron and so that it will give him dignity and honor. So he's saying this is these, these garments that he's going to wear will set him apart, not just sanctify him or, 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 or there'll be anything in it. It says that people would give recognition to him. So when he says it will bring dignity and honor, they're saying that there will be an identity, these garments will serve as an identifying uh, mark of who I've set apart and what i set them apart for. Yeah. Amen. So the garments are not for everybody to wear. Yeah. 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 The garments were for those that will serve as priests. And he says, then he says, go tell the skilled workers whom I have given wisdom. So whenever God wants to make something for the house, he will begin to equip people within the house to begin to catch a hold of the picture yeah, yeah. that is in God's yeah, mind. Yeah. And, 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 and so what, what Moses will do is give a general outline and a general pattern. He will, he will say to them, this is what the garments should be. So uh, there, there, there are different pieces. He says, firstly, a breastplate. Secondly, an effort. Thirdly, a robe. Fourthly, a woven tunic. A, a, a turban and a sash. So he's saying these are the elements what you have to make. But the design, idea, and the pattern, God will give directly yes, to you. Amen. 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 Now, throughout, throughout the building of the tabernacle, 
throughout the, the, the building and the making of the Ark of the Covenant, the making of each of the, of the equipment that would be used in, in the tabernacle, everything that God allowed them to make, he anointed somebody to make it. Amen. That means God. I, I, I said this before. God uses people. Yeah. Yeah. So that means when there is a plan of God in His yeah. mind, He begins to anoint people, and He says, He says, "Tell all the skilled workers whom I yeah. have given wisdom in such matters to make these garments yeah. for Aaron." Amen. Now uh, we, we can focus on the garments, and and sometimes, and you have seen it even in in, in certain uh, in, in certain uh, denominations of church. You would see that they would wear different pieces of garment yeah. that will begin to set them aside, and some of them will wear it on certain official mm -hmm. ceremonies and whatever. But the reality is, these garments were of, of specific nature, and they all had a significance, mm -hmm. right? But I want to talk to you today about two elements, the effort and the breastplate. And he comes in and he talks about, about it and he says in, 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 in verse, verse 6, he says, Make an effort of gold and blue and purple and scarlet yarn, finely, finely twisted linen, and uh, uh, the work of skilled hands, and it shall have two pieces, two shoulder pieces attached at the corners and so that it can be fastened, a skillfully woven waistband, so it, uh, so it will be like it, like one piece. And the effort will be made of gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and finally twisted. Now this is, you see, you see the detail, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying what it should be made of, firstly the material, yeah. then he's saying the colors, that should be in it. Then he says, take two onyx stones and engrave in them the names of the sons of Israel. And in order of their birth, six names on one stone and the remaining six on the other. Engrave these names of the sons on the, on, on the two stones in a way that the gem cutter engraves a seal. And then mount the stones in gold, in, 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 a, in a setting, and then fasten them on the shoulder pieces. Now look at it, right? He's got the names of the sons of Israel, of the tribes that will later become the tribes of Israel, and he says, begin to, to, to immerse it in gold, and then he says, attach it to the shoulder pieces, right? And the effort as a memorial stones for the sons of Israel, and Aaron is to bear their names on his shoulders as a memorial before the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I've been telling you how, how God, when God gives you a people and uh, to shepherd, uh, uh, causes you to lead a people, even whether you're not the, the shepherd of the house, but you're a leader of people, that means you've got to carry them on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got to understand this, that you cannot lead people that you have, you are not prepared to carry on your shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is said of Jesus, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. That means the weight of, of, of the mandate and the burden of the Lord that the Lord gives you, you must be able to carry mm -hmm. on your shoulders. So, so, so he begins to go and then he gives the whole details of, 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 of how it should be. Then he comes into the breastplate. And then he says, fashion a breast piece and make, uh, for making decisions. Look at that, right? The work of skilled hands and make it like the effort of gold and purple and uh, uh, blue and purple and scarlet yarn finely twisted together. And it shall be a square, a span long and a span wide and folded in double. And then you shall mount Four rows of, 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 of four, ro uh, four rows of, of precious stones on it. The first row will, will, will oh, this is high. Carnelian, chrysolite, beryl. The second row of turquoise and lapis and, and, and emerald. The third row of, of jessamine, agate and amethyst. The fourth row of topaz, onyx and jasper. Mm -hmm. 
and then he says, mount them on a gold setting. So that means everything, there were certain elements when it, when it was mounted, they had to be mounted on a gold setting, and it says, and there are 12 stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, and each shall be engraved like a seal, and the name of one of the uh, one of the twelve tribes. So each each stone symbolized a tribe, and so you got the stone set on a. So you got a breastplate, and on the breastplate you got a stone set, and under it is the name of the tribe. Stone, and and there are three three on a row. Four rows, so the twelve sons, and then it says, and the breastplate must be braided with chains of pure gold like rope, and and then make two rings, for it will fasten them to the corners of the breastpiece, and fasten the two chains to the corners of the of the breastpiece, and the others uh, other chains to the settings, attaching them to the shoulder pieces. <laughs> So he's saying, yes, you're going to carry them on your shoulder. But not only are you going to carry them on your, or on your shoulder, you're going to carry them over your chest. Yes. You're going to carry, the a breast piece is the piece that, is, that covers your, your front, your, the, your, your chest part. And it says, and then he says, make two rings. Attach them on either side on the corners of the breast piece in, with inside edge, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, make two more rings and attach them to the bottom so and, and of the effort and close to the seam of, above the waistband and the rings of the breast breastplate breast piece are to be tied with the rings of the effort with a blue cord connecting it to the waistband so that the breast piece doesn't swing out mm -hmm. from the effort yeah. mm -hmm. so he's saying that that should be something that is held tight yeah. It has to be something that is held close to you. And he says, and whenever Aaron enters the holy place, he will be bearing the names of the sons of Israel over his heart. Over his heart. And on the breast piece of decision, a continuing memorial before the Lord. And then you will put the unum and the thunum up in the breast piece so that it will be over Aaron's heart. And whenever he enters the presence of the Lord, Aaron will always be able to bear yeah. the means of making decisions mm -hmm. for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do, do we have another version? Is this the King James, right? It says, and Aaron shall bear the judgment of the, sorry, don't change it. Verse 30. Okay. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Now, I'm looking at this breast piece, and it says, and he has to carry them over his heart. That means any leader leading people, I have to carry on their shoulders and close to their heart. This is important. If you're going to want to see the hand of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, ability to lead people, you cannot just lead people from your head. Yeah. You've got to lead them from your heart. Mm -hmm. That means you've got to feel. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible says of Jesus, he is a high priest that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. That means you cannot lead people that you don't know. You cannot lead people that you aren't, you're not prepared to carry. Remember, if, you're a, if you want to really carry anything heavy, it's hard to carry it really from, from the front. If you really want to carry anything heavy, you carry it on your shoulders. It, it, it gives you a little bit more. So, so you have to come to that. But remember also, the Bible says this, take my yoke upon me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Where's the yoke? 
The yoke is over the shoulder, on the neck. Yeah. Amen. And here he comes in and he says, if you're going to, if you're going to lead anybody, if you're going to come before the Lord on behalf of anybody, you've got to carry them on the shoulder. What does it mean? It doesn't only mean for leaders in the church, mm -hmm. but it means for those that are leaders in the household. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 I want to see for the men that are priests in their homes, mm -hmm. for the single homes where the mothers are carrying that, that weight of spiritual covering over the family, that, that you have to learn how to carry their weight on your shoulder. Amen. And then he comes in and then he says you have to carry it over your heart. Then, then I looked at that element and we, we had uh, uh, on the radio, we were discussing it today on the, the Urim and the Thunum. And uh, there are a few thoughts on the Urim and the Thunum uh, uh, that theologians begin to, they say they were two stones. And uh, there were two stones that would be kept in a pouch just over the heart of the, the priest. It's right uh, in between the effort and your, and your body, that's where it will begin to sit. And they, they say that one of the stones will be made of white and the other stone will be made of, of black. And, and what, what, if, what it symbolized was that whenever you went before the Lord and there was a major or any decision to be made, the Lord will begin to direct you by the stone. If it, if, if it was white, then it meant go, uh, you know. This is, if Israel was going into, into war and, and it pulled out a white stone and it knew that this was it. If you pull out a black stone, it was no, you don't have to go, you know, that type of thing. It also spoke about the judgment that will come, right? So, so when, when, whenever they access, uh, whenever uh, even uh, David, when they were, remember at Ziklag, after the, they came back and, he, uh, and they were going into war, he says, bring me the effort. And he puts on the effort because he wanted to know from God mm. what he should do. Yeah. So you, you can't request from God for the people that you don't carry in yeah. your heart. Yeah. Yeah. You don't carry in your spirit. Yeah. Now this is important. You cannot lead anybody that you do not carry in your spirit. Mm. This is important for any leader, anyone desiring to be a leader within the house of the Lord, you have to be able to carry people on your shoulders and in your spirit. And in that, what I mean that is in your heart, you have to be able to feel for them, you have to be able to walk with them, you have to be able to pray for them, even when they are not doing the things that they should be doing, you should be still trusting God for them. Amen? And so that there will come that time where they will come into the knowledge of what God has in store. This is what you do. Right? So, so he comes in. Remember that account about, uh, was it Elisha and Gehazi? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Naaman. Remember when Naaman came and, 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 and Naaman came for, for prayer to, to the man of God, and the man of God said, go, go dip yourself in the river Jordan and you'll be healed. He goes and he dips, he's healed. He comes back, he wants to give a gift. Mm -hmm. And the man of God says, no, I'm not going to take the gift because if I take the gift, lest you say you made me rich. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and then he goes, and on his way, Gehazi leaves the man of God, and he goes after him, and he says, while you went, uh, there, there were some servants again. I don't know how far they went, yeah. because, I mean, if Gehazi ran, it couldn't have been very, very far. Yeah. I don't know how quick the other people came. Mm. You know, so he makes a story. And, 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 I, and I just thought about it today, that, uh, that the reality is Gazi may have not done this the first time. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> he may have done it before. But this time he goes and he, and, and, and he goes to Naaman, and Naaman says, no, no, you take whatever you need. Mm -hmm. He asked for two, two pieces, he said, no, no, take extra. Mm -hmm. And there was so much that he couldn't carry. Yeah. So you know there's a lot he took, right? Because they sent two servants, and he, and he sneaks it back into the house. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then the, the man of God calls for, for Gehazi, and Gehazi comes panting in. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, Gehazi, where did you go? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Gehazi said, no, no, I didn't go anywhere. And he, and he said, didn't you know that my spirit yeah. went with you? Yeah. Yeah. When you? How did he know that? Mm -hmm. You cannot have somebody yeah. do ministry with you who is not connected to yeah. you, who doesn't carry your spirit and you do not carry in your spirit. Yeah. Amen? And so he comes in that place and he says to them, now this is important for us to understand this.
because the more and more we want to grow, our, our theme for this year is growing in grace, wisdom, and stature. In this, as we grow, we have to understand part of the growing is that we, 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 we are, there's no loose connections. Yeah. The reality is that if we're going to grow together, we have to be able to carry each other in our spirits. Mm -hmm. We have to know each other. We have to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to pray for each other. Yeah. You can't pray for somebody that you are not connected to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, pray uh, believe God for someone that you don't feel for. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can't just pray for somebody mm -hmm. that you've got no connection to. Mm -hmm. But when you pray for someone that you have connection to, if you know a loved one of yours is not well, yeah. and when you pray, isn't your prayer different yeah. Yeah. than this praying yeah. for someone this, yeah. that you just know that is not well? Yeah. Because why? The, the people that you have a spirit connection to yeah. and a heart connection to, you pray deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So here God was challenging uh, in the making of the garments, he was challenging Aaron and saying, when you come here, you're not coming here on your own. Yeah. 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 You're coming here standing on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you've got access to the very throne room of God, the access to the most holy place, the access is not for you. There's a truth for, for all of us. Yeah. Because as the New Testament church, the Bible says that the veil is torn in two and you've got access into the very holies of holies. But when you've got access into the holies of holies, it's not, Lord, here am I standing here asking you for something for me. No, you, you are carrying. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to get into that place that when you get into the presence of God, you are not coming there for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You are accessing God for your family. Yeah. You are accessing God for your loved ones. Yeah. You are accessing God for those that you lead and those that you shepherd. Yeah. Those that you speak into their life. You are accessing God for them so that when you come there, you are coming God and saying, God, I'm bringing my brother before you. I'm bringing my sister before you. I'm bringing, uh, I'm bringing my nephew before you. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this individual to you. I'm coming before you, Lord, believing you that you're going to do it. Because it's not about you getting to heaven on your own. Yeah, yeah. So when the Bible says you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, what's the difference? A priest never stood for himself. Yeah. A priest represents. So if you say you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, yeah. who are you representing? Are you, are you wearing them on your shoulders? Yeah. Are you carrying them on your heart? Or are you coming before, if you coming before God, just for yourself, you haven't matured to the place yeah. where you are coming to the priesthood yeah. Yeah. of God. Yeah. You haven't come into the place where you matured into the family of God. Yeah. You, you, you know, where you come into that place where you said, I'm a, I'm, I am part of this royal priesthood, the holy nation, yeah. set apart people, peculiar people. Amen. This is something that needs to come into all of our spirits. We've come into a place. I was speaking the other day to Pastor Fuller, and we were talking about it, and you know, we were talking about the past two years and, and, and their church, you know, because of the challenges in the US, you know, they've met, they've had driving services for a long for over two years and, and they started their in person uh, services and he says, General, it's so totally different. But he says, you know what's the amazing thing? He says, like I'm starting a new church. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, he says, you know, whilst we love online, he says, but online has made people selfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were so focused on them just making it mm -hmm. that they didn't realize they're still part of the family yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were prepared to just have this individual interaction without carrying it. And he says, now we're starting to see. We've been having online services, we've been having drive-in services, and people were coming. But he says, the condition of the people, we haven't seen till now. And yet, we're seeing now the aftermath of this two years 
of what has happened in the church. And, and, and some of it is hidden, some of it is, is slowly emerging. Yeah. Some of it is right there in your face, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is happening. But I want you to understand, this is the time where more than ever before, we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. We need to, people have become selfish, mm -hmm. not from the place of uh, just looking after self, but in, in the place where even their time their resources, their prayers. It's only about me, mine, and mine. It's not about anything else. And the reality is that we are part of the family of God. There are greater things that God has yet to do. So I'm here to encourage you today. Let's just pray together. You know, when I looked at this priestly government, said you can go in, 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 in Exodus 28 and read about the other aspects of it. But the important part of it is that I'm getting dry about that. <laughs> the important part of all of this is that he, God wants you to bear others in your spirit. Yeah. Some of you got love, some of you got family. All, well, all of us got family, all of us got love. All of us got people that are really not in the place that God yeah. wants them. And I, 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 my challenge to you is, how are you reaching out to them? How are you sowing into their lives? It's good. And, and you can say, Pastor, I'm praying for them in my yeah. private time. I'm praying for them. But can you reach out? Yeah. Can you engage them? Can you just trust God? Can you just love them through it? it it's not even about preaching at them. Don't, 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 don't preach at them or, you know, encourage them, build them, but show them more the love of God. Sometimes it's just showing the love of God that can win a whole lot of people. And here I want you to understand, this is important for us. Don't give up on anybody. Don't give up on them even if they are distracted, even if they are rebellious, even if they even if they, they don't receive it openly what you are doing. You just continue standing in the gap for them, believing God for them. They may not see it right now, but I'm believing God that God will open their eyes. I'm praying that today that your homes will be filled with the peace of God. You know, we, we, we always say that, that may the peace of God and the joy of the Lord be in your home and in your family. But when everybody in the home is of a different, carrying a different spirit. It's hard to enjoy that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to enjoy that, that joy, that oneness, isn't it? Because there is a conflict in the house, in the spiritual realm, in the house. And no matter what you can do to try and create a celebratory mood, it doesn't change. But I pray today that God will give you all that grace to start to see that happen in your homes, in your families, in your loved ones, because this time, we really need God. Yeah. We really yeah. need God to yeah. do something great. Let's just bow our heads together. Let us just pray together. God, you are good. Oh. Your mercy is endured forever. Thank you, my God. Father, like, like Aaron, would be instructed to carry even on his chest and on his, over his heart the nation of Israel, carry them on their shoulders. Father, I pray, give us a burden for our brothers. Yes, give us a burden for our sisters. Yes, give us a burden for our loved ones. Give us a burden for the house of God. For our brothers that have backslidden. For some of them that have lost their faith. For some of them that have turned their backs on the Lord. For some of them that have just given up. I pray today that you would heal. Father, I pray for those, of oh God, that have lost loved ones and gotten disappointed. Some of them that have turned away from the ways of the Lord. I pray today, show up in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Let us be like the good shepherd yes. who would leave the 99 and go after the one. 
I pray that in this season that none will be lost. But all will come to repentance. All will come to eternal life. So we bless you. The show up in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.